beginning, so look forward to that. I love um, Young Reader Editions. It's a wonderful way that you take some adult content and you make it more accessible. And of course, Trevor Noah's autobiography, Born a Crime, if you don't realize there is a Young Reader's Edition perfect for middle school, and of course it's a great story that deals with the issue of racism. Um, I have given you a, I, I keep a destiny resource list of all the books about racism in our library. But of course when it came to the fiction, it was like, I can have, there are almost way too many books about the American, um, the American experience of black racism. So um, I'm really actively looking for different examples of racism in other cultures to kind of balance the collection. Now, I have been um, part of a, uh, an Indian Book Award for children, and these were books on this Need Book Award that I just want to highlight. So The Boy Who Asked Why, which is a picture biography of Dr. Ambedkar, and this man is, and everybody in other countries, kids need to know about these stories. It's one of these great hero stories. He was um, an untouchable. He was the first untouchable to earn a PhD. In fact, he earned two PhDs, one from Columbia University and one from the London School of Economics. He went on when India became its own country. He wrote the Constitution. He's just amazingly powerful and really did a lot to raise the profile of untouchables, which are called Dalits, so the Dalit movement. Now, the novel on the right isn't necessarily about the caste system, but it's a book when I read it, it's like a YA book, she came to Singapore, and I heard her speak years ago and bought the book and loved it, but it's about a 13-year-old girl who finds out accidentally on her 13th birthday that she's adopted, and she has a mental breakdown. Now, there are many reasons why you might have a mental breakdown if you found out you were adopted, but it never occurred to me that you might be completely freaked out, and she's a girl from a very wealthy family, loving parents, very liberal, she was concerned that she might be an untouchable, and how would she know? And she didn't dare go back to school because no one would be her friend. And I was like, oh my gosh. So it's, it was an interesting thing of reading a book from another culture and having a realization about what the social justice issues are and how deeply embedded they might be in other cultures. The next one, these are more books from this Me Book Award, these two on the left. And this is, um, is a structural. Um, uh, racism in India related to the indigenous people's land rights. So on the left is a lovely picture book, I Will Save My Land, about a little girl who understands how hard it was, oh my gosh, two minutes, we gotta go, okay, Year of the Weeds, about the Dawn Trap, more um, land right issues, which relate to the two books on the right, but we don't have time to go into it, guys. Uh, this is Korean's, next one, Barb, really quick. He said two minute morning. I saw it two in the morning, right? Yeah, yeah, man, oh, we're, we're going fast. Anyway, um, here's a YA book and an adult book dealing about the racism against Koreans in Japan, and now we go to... Okay, we all know about Windows and Mirrors, so I don't really need to say anything about that, but what we need to do is to do more than just reflect back a face. We need to look at people's cultural backgrounds and you know, uh, other aspects of the person, and we need to bring that balance into our collection. Okay, the next slide, I think we can just really flip through, Barb, because all these books will be linked, and so Third Culture Kids, this is our kind of diversity. Next. More about the diaspora around the world. We need more books that relate to our kids. Okay, now we have to go. Uh, two recent articles in New York Times, very interesting about other forms of identity. We obviously want to promote translations. Um, uh, the next one is... Um, if you don't know, um, the Global Literature and Libraries Initiative is amazing, and all these, they have been compiling lists of books in translation, YA and children's, so you can go there. Own Voices, obviously issues, there's a recent article, um, like how John Boyne, who's gay, has been like, can he write about transgender teens? Is it allowed? Next, look at uh, Design Instructing. Okay, so we're gonna wind up now. The train metaphor, are we on the right track? Most importantly is, uh, are, the train, are we on the right train? Because all over the world, trains are so different and maybe we're not on the right train. I don't want to be on the US train. I don't want to follow those book lists anymore. I believe that they are the wrong track. And I need to start looking at um, some different ways and looking and getting 
than listing people's help to make sure that I'm collecting in the right way and not compromise my collection by buying books just because they tick a box. I am the junior school librarian at Wellington College in Bangkok. And get out your phones because I'm going to ask you a question later. So I'm here to tell you a story about um, a startup library. Um, so, oops, I'm sorry. I hit the wrong button. Thank you, Sam. It's this button, right? So Wellington College is a brand new school. It just opened in August of 2018. And when I got the job to go work there, it was like, oh, this is a dream. I get to open my own library. I get to make sure the catalog is clean. I'm going to have the room for brand new books. It's going to be so exciting. And I got there, and this was a picture I was showing. Oh, it's just going to be lovely. And then I walked in. <laughs> what happened? Well, it turns out that the school made a book order that was not going to get there until about six weeks into the school year. And the Minister of Education was coming to review the school and he wanted to see books on shelves in order to certify the school to open. So our head of school got in touch with a used bookseller and said, send me $5,000 worth of books. And it was like Goodwill threw up in there. <laughs> so I walked in, and that was what greeted me. And I was also told, no, you don't have an assistant. And oh, we didn't buy you a computer. And no, there's no catalog system. But we open in five days. <laughs> so that's more. And even more. So, my dad used to say, when cows learn to fly, you got to get a bigger umbrella. He said it in a much cruder way when I got uh, older, but you get the point. So, I literally went home and just sat on my couch like, I, it's too big, it's like Sisyphus, you know, I'm going to just like, just be rolling that ball up the hill all year long, and it was like, I can't get ready, and I'm, Discouraged, but then I had some courageous friends that helped me out with that. So this is uh, is the is the, is it Valley? No. Uh, well, that's my lovely Paul. So we'll just skip that part. I was going to ask you guys what you would do first, but if you have an idea, if you walked into that, we could just do this face to face. What would you do first? Anybody? Cry? I did. I did. Anybody? Fiction, non-fiction, so just broad separation. Okay. Um, the other thing that um, I didn't mention is that um, our Thai staff put the books on the shelf. And they don't read English, and so everything was completely intershell. There was no rhyme or reason to any of it. So fiction, non-fiction, yeah. Anybody else? Weed. Oh my God, yes. So that's what I did. I separated the books by broad category and that took forever. Um, so I just started with board books. They're going to go over here. Picture books going to go over here. Fiction's going to go over here. And nonfiction over here. And then I weeded, and as Emily referenced earlier, I used Musty, but I also used Fresh, which is from Jennifer Lagarde. There was so much junk in there, I can't even tell you how much junk was in there. There was a book called How to Deal with Your Midlife Crisis. <laughs> I saved that for the head of school because I knew I was going to have a conversation with him later. Anyway, I didn't really. 
Um, so yes, I, I weeded a lot. But you know, that was the other thing that was kind of deflating is that you come into a brand new library and you think, ah, oh, I'm not gonna have to weed for three years at least. No, and of those books, there were probably about, I don't know, 6,000 of them, and I only kept about 2,500. The rest of it was absolute junk. Um, it either had somebody's name in it, or pages were torn out, or one of them looked like someone had been sick on it, and I washed my hands a lot. Um, got shoulder massages pretty regularly, which is good because they're cheap in Bangkok. <laughs> So then, um, I did nonfiction into broad doing categories, nothing um, really detailed. Fiction and picture books and stats by the author's last name. So at least when kids came in, if they asked for something, I had a general idea. But keep in mind, when you get used books and boxes, there's no title list. I had absolutely no idea what we had. So, um, and then put the picture books in the seating. Bonus points if you could see what's wrong with that picture. Well, first of all, maybe a hint, those shelves are about 24 to 30 inches deep. So what happens when the kids sit down? 